Good morning, St. George. Is this is your good news for this dark and rainy Thursday, March the 24th. Our story this morning is taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verses 30 to 46. It is one that appears in all four Gospels and with which we are all very familiar, that of the feeding of the 5,000. There's a lot happening in these first few verses. First of all, we see how large Jesus' mission had become. The apostles had been working, teaching, and traveling with Jesus, and all of them needed rest. But their attempts to go to an isolated place to rest and eat was thwarted by the crowds after Jesus. Not crowds after him to attack him, but crowds following, excited to see this charismatic teacher who spoke of a new way of being. Mark tells us that the crowds moved so faster and in so many that they beat the boats to the shore and were waiting for them when Jesus and his apostles arrived. After a period of time, the apostles had hoped that Jesus would dismiss the crowds. They were tired all that, after all, and they really just wanted to spend time alone to eat and to rest. But Jesus, recognizing in compassion the need before him, says, No, these people are hungry too. And they are tired as well. We must feed them. And of course, his friends immediately reject this idea. They step into their default framework of scarcity. Are we to spend all our money feeding these people? We don't have enough. Like the devil himself whispering in their ears, like he does to ours when we hear that voice that says, well, what about me? What about my needs? There isn't enough to go around. I can't afford to help anyone. I can't give any time or energy or money. But the very word of God shuts down that voice and says, no, offer what you have. Give what you can with an honest and true heart and God's abundance will take care of the rest. There's an intrinsic vulnerability that is required of us to follow this way of the kingdom of God's abundance, because God's abundance is a threat to the powers and principalities of this world who want to maintain control. In calling the crowds sheep, Jesus recognizes their vulnerability. The events of the story immediately preceding this, the beheading of John the Baptist, show just how dangerous it can be to work against the establishment toward the realization of the kingdom of God. And Jesus' actions here of the feeding of these multitudes of people, his actions are a direct critique of Herod, of this worldly power who hosted elaborate banquets for the elite at the expense of the vulnerable. Jesus fed the hungry crowds and demonstrated what the ways of the kingdom in opposition to the ways of this world look like. And so when we think we can't give enough, we give what we can. Even if it feels insufficient, even when we want to surrender to that voice that says, hoard it up for yourselves, there will never be enough. If it's from the heart, no matter how small it is, an honest offering, God will take it and transform it through his abundance. Jesus shows us in the story today what it is to follow him. His mission on earth was not just about the kingdom of God to come, but about the economic realities of people's lives in the here and now. We follow him by feeding people, by clothing them. We care for them in their vulnerability. We walk in solidarity with those who are never invited to fancier parties those who are threatened by the powerful. Imagine this world if we each lived out the reality of God's abundance, God's grace, and God's love. We can choose to do this. We only have to say yes. Let us offer a brief prayer to God. God of all abundance and kindness and joy. 
Help us to walk in the paths of your Son. Help us to be bold, strong, courageous, to care for the vulnerable, to feed the hungry, to not get trapped in the concerns about our own security and to trust that you provide for all of our needs. Help us to see your grace and love and know that we truly serve you when we serve each other. We ask this all in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I wish you a blessed Thursday, everyone. Hopefully the sun comes out. But either way, we know that this rain leads to, uh, leads to new life and to new growth. And uh, it is a blessing to walk with God.